so what are literacy narratives and what can they tell us? Literacy narratives are stories about when, how, where, and why, and under what circumstances people read and or write. To tell a literacy narrative, people choose an event from their past, happy or sad, long or short, recent or long past, and connect that activity to their current feelings about and or abilities in reading and writing. As John Trimber notes, literacy narratives offer rich descriptions of various settings in which people use writing and the various social purposes to which this writing serves. Everyone has a literacy narrative. In fact, everyone has multiple stories they can tell about their reading and writing practices. The literacy stories that people tell speak to us in such eloquent ways about citizens, about their reading and writing practices, about the cultures within which these practices occur, and the communities that give rise to such practices and continue to value them. Stories about reading and composing bring alive our scholarly understandings, as well as the complex cultural, political, ideological, and historical context that shape and are shaped by literate practices and the values associated with them. Such stories animate personal and familial literacy practices. They reveal the effects of our educational practices on the thinking of young people, and they illuminate personal perspectives and the multiple identifications in ways that statistics and experiments simply cannot. Now, we're fascinated with personal literacy narratives because these stories carry such valuable information about reading and composing, not only for scholars and teachers, but for librarians, community literacy workers, individual citizens, families, and organizations. Such narratives as Linda Brodke, Deborah Brandt, Gail Haywisher, and Bronwyn Williams remind us are rhetorically powerful accounts, the discursive stuff of which people fashion their lives and make sense of their world, reveal their personal goals and persuade others, shape their own identities and situate themselves in affiliation or opposition to others, define their roles in schools, communities, and workplaces. In fact, first-hand personal narratives are sometimes so richly laden with information about the hopes and fears of communities, with the histories and cultural values of groups, with information about personal relationships, that more formal academic tools and approaches seem less dimensional in comparison. Now for some history and context. In 2007, Lewis Ullman and I started the Digital Archive of Literacy Narratives, the DALN, as an online repository for people's firsthand stories about reading and or composing, and the role that such literate activities played in their lives. By 2012, people had contributed more than 3,500 narratives to the DALN, making it the largest publicly available online collection of such stories in the world, as far as we know. The strength of the collection, in my own opinion, arose from the communities of individuals who contributed their narratives, deaf and hard of hearing citizens, African American women scholars, autistic self-advocates, active duty military personnel and veterans, gay, lesbian, transgender, and queer citizens, church members, park rangers, individuals who speak Arabic, Japanese, French, Indonesian, and Chinese, people who, learn their G who earn their GEDs, um, jazz musicians and dancers, teachers, ministers and church leaders, artists, architects, authors, and athletes. And it's through the stories of all of these individuals that we have come to know more about the communities to which they belong. As Lucille Clifton, Eleanor Long, and Dwayne Rowan point out, the stories of individual members of a community, their firsthand experiences and understandings, not only provide firsthand documentation of their literate lives, but can also help make the public aware of the situated knowledge that every such group possesses, can highlight the critical incidents that members of the group share in terms of their lived experiences, and can enhance the public understanding of what it means to be a member of a particular community. 
Would you like to see some example community literacy collections? Check out the examples here in the literacy narratives in the context of the Black Church 2011 and here the literacy narratives in the context of the Black Church 2012. Both of these collections were contributed for the case study course taught at Ohio State University. This collection was made by H. Lewis Ullman, one of the original founders of the Digital Archive of Literacy Narratives.